On today's high watt soundbite, we're following the signal path. The very first sound that I ever made on a console was one of the most horrendous feedback sounds that I've ever heard in my life. Our recording school instructor posed the question, you know, who wants to jump on this API console and give it a spin? Well, I shot my arm up so quickly and I remember sitting down at that console and proceeding to send the output of an EMT plate reverb directly back onto itself. Oh man, the feedback that came through those speakers was something I'll never forget. I almost took them out. You know, that was my first experience of being a recording engineer, sitting down at a console and creating havoc. Well, not much has changed in 30 years. I don't take as many monitors out anymore, but feedback is still something that I experience in the studio from time to time. And I believe that if you're not, you're probably not pushing your own envelope enough and trying enough experiments. So for today's session, I've got a couple of examples of what I typically get up to in audio routing, but this is really more of a big picture session. This is the first of many that we're gonna get into the subject. In my own experience, probably nine out of 10 articles that I see written on the subject of audio signal path are written in a way that sort of made to address problem solving in the studio. And there's no question that a solid foundation of signal flow is gonna help you solve problems, no doubt about that. But what I'd really love to see is for you to start shifting the way you think about the whole subject. Start thinking about audio signal path as a means to a creative end in the studio and not just a means to solving problems. A super solid foundation in audio signal path is gonna to lead to better productions. It's gonna to lead to better sounding records, it's gonna to lead to better gain staging and the idea and the understanding of the whole concept of gain staging. So many things that we do in the studio rely on a solid foundation of audio signal path. Yeah, I grew up in this business before the modern computer and, and DAW system, so it wasn't unusual to have like a 900 point patch bay in the studio where every audio signal had to be routed manually through a cable. You know, nowadays we got these nice bantam patch bays that are really tiny and they don't take up much space, but back in the day, they were these big old phone patch bays and they literally had these great big cords. I used to wear, I used to look like I had dreads. I would always have these long cables hanging around my neck because I was the assistant engineer over by the patch bay. Johnny on the spot, just always ready to make the next patch, right? So what a great experience that was at understanding signal flow in a studio, to physically see every connection and have to make it yourself. Now, I'm sure some of you can relate to this, but I've done a lot of signal routing in my studio via the patch bay and setting it up to be normaled. If you're not familiar with what that term means, it's very simple. A patch bay is made of two rows of connections. Generally, you connect all of the outputs of your equipment to the top row of that patch bay and all of the inputs of your equipment to the bottom row. The reason that you do that is because they use a technology inside those patch bays that allow them to be automatically connected. In other words, the output of this vocal mic shows up in my patch bay, but I don't actually have to patch it because directly below where the output of this microphone shows up is the input to my mic preamp. So there's a bunch of connections that are sort of already made in my studio. Okay, so let's talk about one of the simplest signal flows that we can. How do I get my voice recorded into my DAW? You know, in order for that to happen, so many things are going on kind of behind the scenes. It's really good to kind of step back from the whole process and just sort of look at it one connection at a time. Just like that old patch bay idea, right? Make a connection and then move on to your next. So I know that it takes a microphone to start with. This is a transducer, which means that it's responsible con for converting one form of energy into another. In this case, it's converting the sound waves that are propagating out of my larynx to an electrical signal that can travel down that cable. What's the first thing we have to do with a microphone signal? We have to amplify it with a mic preamp, okay? So my patch bay is handling this connection for me. So the outputs of my API show up in my patch bay and are normaled to the first two inputs of my audio interface, which is an Apollo 8. So 
All of those connections are already made. I don't actually have to physically do anything. Some of you I'm sure can relate to this, but for at least a decade, I didn't have a patch bay in my studio and it makes it a little bit more inconvenient, but just because I've got a patch bay doesn't mean anything. You can do all of these connections physically. Before I had a patch bay, it just meant that the output of this microphone was physically connected to the microphone input of this preamp, right? And if you ever had to change that, you had to get crawling around and stuff. So vocal mic, mic preamp, audio interface, boom, simple and direct connection, how to get my voice into my DAW. So let's talk about another example. This is a really quirky song idea that I just got started on. It's a work in progress, so you get to see how weird I can get. But what a great example in a practice that I get up to all the time where I'm gating tracks and then keying or triggering that gate with an external source. I talked about it in last week's session, Radio Gator. This is a perfect example, nice simple idea of how I pull that off. So let's have a listen to this quirky idea, check it. Yeah, that might be a little more than quirky, but great example in something that I get up to all the time, and that is keying a gate with an external signal. Whether we're talking about a radio like we were in last week's session, or this snare sound. Gated noise, something that I use all the time in the studio. I simply just created a stereo track inserted a signal generator in Pro Tools and selected the pink noise generator. In this particular case, I've filtered out a little bit of the bottom end of that kind of broadband pink noise. And of course, I've put a gate on it. Let me go ahead and bypass this gate so we hear the noise feeding. So to gate that noise and trigger it with the snare drum, it's a very simple procedure of just inserting a gate across that noise channel and then immediately assign the key input to an available bus that you have. In this particular session, I kept it really simple. I was using like bus one, two, three, and four to feed my gates. So this is bus two. I can look and see that on my send, on my snare channel, there it is, I'm sending out of bus two. And notice that the send is in pre fader. Probably 90% of the sends that I use in any given mix are in pre-fader for me. This is just something that I've gotten into from day one. Why do I like that? Because I like to be able to solo my effects and hear them absolutely as is. I don't want to have anything kind of relying on another channel. I've just always been a big fan of pretty much setting up all my sends as a pre-fader send so that I have individual control of all those channels, including the return. Now, the beautiful thing about generating pink noise and then gating it and putting it on your snare drum, so you've got all kinds of options with this gate. You can open this thing up, you can set the release time to be more like kind of a reverb or almost like mocking a reverb. Check it. So yeah, gating pink noise and then keying that gate with the snare drum can add a beautiful texture to almost any snare drum, particularly with the amount of control that we have on that gate to make it either really tight or open up. Absolutely killer sounding, I love it. And that silly kind of 8-bit sound that I've got right off the top, it's coming from my Eurorack system. Check it out ungated first. Here it is.
just a super simple sequence going on, right? Well, I put a gate across that and then keyed that gate with the kick drum to come up with this. This whole business of externally keying gates, this can just open up a whole new world for you. Whether we're talking about a radio session like I was working on last week, or just simply tweaking your snare drum sound by adding a bit of gated noise to it. But we're just touching the surface, and this is only the first of what will be many sessions on signal flow. It's only through repetitive processing and trying different experiments that we can really expand our knowledge on signal flow. And it's so critically important. Why? Because every single thing that we do in the studio for the rest of our whole career will be enhanced by a greater knowledge and fundamental understanding of signal flow. So thank you very much for sitting in on this session and look forward to some more of these for sure. <laughs>